Hello, my dear students. Welcome back again to Biotechnica. So I think all of you are waiting for the real examination that's going to be on 17th. So today is 15th. So we are marching towards a success, actually. So 17th is our exam. So all the very best. And be confident in what you have studied. You have almost studied for more than six to seven, eight months. So you have done really good and you have revised everything properly. So last minute today is 15, uh, 14. So 15 and 16, you just have to brush up all the things, just going for question paper. And on the final day, just relax yourself, which is very important. So make sure you are confident enough and don't be worried. Don't be stressful. Don't have any kind of exam temperament anytime. So be confident enough. Today, we will have some questions, uh, mixed questions from biology I'm going to talk about. So very quickly, we can do it within one hour. Join along with me. Just join this kind of series so that it will be really, really helpful for you. And if you guys want to know more about Needed Biotechnica, you can join our Telegram channel, which will be displayed in the screen or you will see it in the description box or in the comment section. And you can also subscribe to our channel to get more updates also. So let's get started. Before going in for the session, I just want somebody to just let me know whether you can see me and hear me. If you can see me and hear me, you can just uh, text me with a yes. Yes, good evening, Mati. Very good evening. Very good evening, Roshni. All the very best, guys. You are really going to do great. Yes, very good evening, Dertak. All the very best, Dertak. Yes. So we'll confidently we'll solve some questions, guys. So just join along with me. I think all of you are ready. We'll solve as much as possible. And my suggestion from my side, I would say, is just make um, biology questions almost solve it within 45 to 50 minutes. Do not take more time for biology. I would say if you're going to spend a lot of time for biology, you will not get a lot of time for your physics and chemistry. Approach the questions which you know and very specifically mark exactly the correct answer in the OMR sheet. When you are puzzled or when you are confused or when you are in kind of anxiety, don't mark any wrong answer. Make sure whether you're are marking the correct answer for the first question. So please make sure that you're doing it and make sure that you complete the examination some five minutes before or 10 minutes before. That will be very helpful for you. So don't fill up the OMR sheet at the end of the botany or at the end of zoology or at end of physics don't mark any kind of answers in your question paper directly mark onto your omr sheet so that you can save your time okay so all of you let's solve the question let's proceed on the first question for you guys if the distance between two consecutive base pair is 0 0.34 nanometer and the total number of base pair of a double helix is in a mammalian cell is 6.64 now the question for you guys is what is going to be the total number of base pair for a haploid cell? Answer this question, all of you. Revise it. Tell me for a haploid, how much is the base pair for a haploid? Very good. The answer is D. Very good, all of you. The answer is D. Just let me know the answer. For a haploid cell, what is the base pair? This is very important. In your examination, they can either give you haploid or they can give you diploid. So there you make a mistake. So make sure. What is it? Yes, so it's going to be C. Here they have given 6.6 into 10 to the power of 9 base pair, which is a diploid cell. Please make sure. In examination, they can either give you 3.3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pair. So make sure you're understanding the question properly. Here they have given diploid which means they're talking about one cell. We know that how to calculate for the length of the DNA. Everybody knows it. So how do you calculate for the length of the DNA? Very simple. We already know the length of the DNA is going to be 2.2 meters. We already know. But suppose if they give you some changes here, make sure you're calculating it. So the length of the DNA is very simple. Just multiply the base pair, total base pair in a diploid cell. Very important. If they give you a haploid cell and they ask you to calculate, just make it to 6.6. .6, okay. Into total number or we can say the distance between consecutive base pair to base pair, which is given 0.34. How do you do it? So you would just have to multiply 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of 9 into 0.34 into 10 to the power of minus 9. So this 2 gets cancelled and the remain comes around 
two four meter. So the, all of you have answered it correctly, which is two point two four meter. Very good, Ashwin. Very good, Stunner. Yes. The next question: Which of the following statement regarding mitochondria is incorrect? Guys, listen carefully. Incorrect. Okay. Just answer this question. Mitochondrial matrix contains single circular DNA and ribosomes. And outer membrane is permeable to monomers, which means they are talking about glucose, fructose, and fats. Definitely a uh, micromolecule. And a protein monomers means amino acids. They are talking about. The next one, the enzymes of electron transport chain are in the outer membrane. The next one, inner membrane is convoluted with foldings. And just answer this question. Very simple, guys. Very simple question. Very good, Ashwin. The answer is C only. Very good. Very good. The answer is C. Why? Listen carefully. We know that a mitochondria is going to have a matrix. So this is the matrix. In this matrix area, you will see a single circular DNA. Definitely. And can anybody tell me what is the ribosome? It is seventy S or eighty S. Very quick answer, guys. Come on, make it a bit faster. Fast revision: seventy S or eighty S ribosomes. 70s or 80s faster come on very good ashwin the answer is 70s ribosome but a eukaryotic cell in the cytoplasm they are going to have 80s ribosome but in the organelles like mitochondria and chloroplast they are going to have 70s usually 70s will be there for prokaryotic cell okay this is correct statement but they ask you to check the incorrect second one outer membrane which means this membrane is the outer membrane yes it is permeable to glucose fructose all the molecules Enzymes of ETC. We already know about electron transport chain, which has complex one, complex two, complex three, and complex four. Where are they present? They are actually present in the inner membrane, but they have given outer membrane. So this is this this is the one we have to choose. So this is the incorrect statement. The next one, inner membrane has infoldings like this. That we call it as what? Cristae. Yes. So very good, all of you. The answer is C. Next question. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Incorrect. Viroids lack a protein coat. Viruses are obligate parasite. Infective constituent in virus is the protein coat. Prions are going to be consisting of abnormally folded protein. Answer this question, guys. Just type me with third question. What is the answer? So that I'll be getting to know which one you are exactly answering. Anybody? Just answer this question. Very good, Dare Tech. Okay, very good, Dare Tech. Very good, very good, Kavita. Yes, very good. Listen. Viroids. This question usually comes always, so make sure sometimes you might have a question on virus, viroids, virions, and prions. I'm going to give you a very quick revision. All of you make it a point. First, virus. Virus. We already know it's very smaller. It lives inside a host. If it is living inside a host, it is an obligate parasite. You cannot see a virus onto a bench or anywhere, onto your laptop or anywhere. You will see only in the living body. So this is a correct statement. But they ask you to find out the incorrect statement. Viroids. Let's talk about virus. What does a virus has? Suppose if I have to talk about a virus, virus can have a genetic material which can be a DNA, which can be a RNA also. Virus can be RNA also, DNA also, and they're going to have a protein. So this is called capsid. All of you know, this is capsid, which is made up of capsomeres. Capsomeres are mono units. Many capsomeres joins together and make up a capsid. Inside, you're going to have DNA and RNA. Anything is possible. So this is going to be virus. So they have a genetic material and a protein. We can say. What about all of you? Remember it once again. Virions. This is virion. I'm talking, guys. Virion. Okay. What about virions? Virions. You have to remember they have a genetic material which can be either a DNA or RNA. They have a capsid. So this is going to be the capsid. And this is going to be the genetic material, and around this, they have an envelope. Very important. Around this, they have an envelope. In the envelope, they are going to have some proteins. You might have seen in HIV, right? Th those are going to be like this also. But there, you will see some differences in the capsule itself. So this is virion. So virions can be given like functional virus. Very functional because a virus has only genetic material and the capsid, but they have envelope also. They have a protein which is protruding out. These are membrane proteins. Okay, this is virion. So remember, virus, virion. The next one I'm going to talk about is viroids. Viroids. What is viroids? 
Viroids, you have to remember, they are only genetic material. Remember, genetic material, very specifically single-stranded RNA only. And this viroids can infect only plant. It will not infect an animal. If you see viruses infects animals, plants. Virion also infects plants and animals, but viroids will always infect plants. This is very important. Just remember, prions are very simple. It starts with P. So just remember, they are made up of only proteins. And these proteins are going to be misfolded proteins, not functional proteins. Misfolded. Misfolded means what? Abnormally folded protein. So remember, virus has genetic material and protein. Virions has genetic material, protein, envelope, and a glycoprotein or a membrane protein. And viroids are going to have only genetic material, which is RNA. Prions are going to have all the proteins, only proteins, but that protein is not a functional protein. So this statement is correct, but they ask you to find out the incorrect. So what's the answer, guys? Very simple. Third is C. Okay. Viroids lack protein code. Definitely, I told you. Viroids are going to have only genetic material, which is single standard RNA, no, no protein. So this is a correct statement. Viruses are obligate parasite, correct statement. Next question, infective constituent in virus. Okay, the in viruses, genetic material is the one which actually infects. So it is not protein code, but they have given protein code. So this answer you have to choose. The next prions we said abnormally folded one, that is also correct. So this virus, virions, viroids, prions will come either in a match the following question or such kind of question. So answer is very simple, guys. It's option C. Next question for you, what will be the sequence of mRNA produced by the following stretch of DNA? Remember template stand and coding stand and answer those questions. Just answer me with four and this one. Very good, Kavita. Very good, Mati. Anybody? Just answer. Fourth question for you. Fourth is B. Okay, let's check. See, remember which strand you're going to copy. Remember easily, you are going to copy the template strand. Okay, you're going to copy the template strand. Then you are going to copy this template strand. mRNA will be just opposite. Check here they have given three prime. So just remember five prime here. And this side is going to be three prime. Just eliminate the option. You're seeing three primes, so reject here. Reject this one. Check in for B and D. Yes, of course. A complementary sequence in mRNA is definitely going to be U. So if you find at least one, you are landing up with a correct statement. So answer is very simple. Option B. Very good, all of you. Very good, Kavita. Very good, Stana. Okay, this is one of the important questions that you may expect in your morphology in flowering plants. Floral formula of Lily AC. Come on, guys, answer this. I think all of you can see it. What's the answer for this? One, two, three, or four? Very quick answer. We'll always also revise Solana CA. We will also be revising uh, Lily AC and Fabe CA together. Just do this question, all of you. Five is C. Very good. Option C is the correct one. We know it is going to be bracteate. Very good. And whenever you're going to see like this, it is referring to actinomorphic flowers. Remember, radial in animal kingdom, we'll be studying about radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. In plants, we will not call it radial symmetry. Instead, we call it actinomorphic. So this is radial symmetry. Radial symmetry, all of you know, if you're going to cut it all the sides, you will get the equal portions, right? Just a minute. You'll get the equal portions like this. This is radial symmetry. So this plant is radial symmetry, actinomorphic, and it's a bisexual flower, correct? And whenever you see Liliaceae, one trick I'm telling you guys, calyx and corolla are actually fused. So if a calyx and corolla are fused, we used to call it as perianth, that's all. So only in Liliaceae family, you will see something P over here. You can see P here, right? So it is P over here. So definitely there is no P here. So you can go for elimination and you can choose option C. Definitely perianth, calyx and corolla fused, androsium 3 plus T, but not fused. Three ovaries or we can say, and they're going to be inferior ovary. Answer is very simple. These questions are a definite questions in your NEET examination. So this is the thing. Sometimes they will not give you the family names. They will not give you what is the floral formula for Liliaceae. They will give you ala aloe vera or they can give you what is the uh, family for tulip so definitely all of you go 
revise the name and the examples of the Liliaceae Solanaceae by today itself. Okay, yes. Listen, uh, you guys can answer me. Can you just tell me Solanaceae? I'm going to revise it once again for all of you. Solanaceae family, if we have to talk about. It's not Bracteate, so we are not going to write Bracteate here. Uh, Solanaceae examples, we know brinjal, tomato, potatoes, all these things are going to be coming in Solanaceae family. So we will write all this thing, which is actinomorphic again. And they're bisexual. All you can see bisexual. Only in Fabaceae family, you will see zygomorphic percentage. Okay, here you're seeing actinomorphic. So remember, Solanaceae also, Liliaceae or radially symmetrical. You can cut the flower into any side. And they are bisexual. All the families are bisexual flowers. So easy to understand. The next one you have to remember is calyx. Calyx is represented K. It's going to be five, which are fused. And corolla is going to be five, which is fused. And androsium is five. And gynaecium is going to be two. So these two are actually additions. So remember this one. All of you revise it. If you're going to talk about Fabaceae, all of you revise by now itself. Fabaceae, you have to remember. Percentage, zygomorphic, very good. And it's going to be bisexual flowers. Calyx is 5, which are fused. Corolla, 1 plus 2 plus 2. And androsium is going to be 9 fused and 1. And gynaecium is going to be only 1 and it's going to be superior ones. So revise only three families at least which is given in your book along with the image. There are possibility. Remember only the examples, the floral diagram along with the formula which will definitely come in your examination. The next question, correct position of flowers over thalamus in mustard plant. Now the question for you guys. Mustard plant is a hypogynous or epigynous or perigynous flower. If you know the answer, you can literally answer this question. Anybody? What's the answer for question number six? Question number six. Just type me with very good Roshni, very good Ashwin, very good Ashwin. It's hypogynous flower. Hypo, it's given. So let's check. It's a hypogynous flower. Let's understand. What's the answer? Ashwin, can you tell me what's the answer? For question number six, Detek, Mati, uh, Roshni, Kavita, Stano, you can just answer this question. What's the answer for this question? Very good, very good. It's option A only. The gynaecium, gynaecium, remember, if you are remembering gynaecium is a male, a part of female flower, just remember G is referring to girl, ultimately female, okay? So just remember like this. So I'm going to... Take this NCRT book and revise it once again. This is also a definite question. Either they can ask you hypogynous, epigynous question of families. There are probabilities. So study this one. So here, this is the gynaecium, female part. And it is this is the thalamus. So this is present above this, superior ovary, we can say. So hypogynous flowers have superior ovary. And this is going to be the peri. Peri means something which is outer which is you can see all the other parts like androsium, petals and sepals are actually onto the rim of this one. Whereas the in, uh, ovary is in the center. This is perigynous. Both the things are going to be perigynous. And this is epigynous. Epi means something which is above. So above the ovary, all the other parts are present. This is epigynous flower. You should remember the examples for this one, which will definitely come in your examination. They won't give you a hypogynous flowers directly. So remember the examples of hypogynous flowers. Remember biology, computer science, and mathematics. Okay, BCM. So B, remember brinjal, china rose, and mustard. And mustard. Okay, so the question they have asked you is directly mustard plant. If it is, of course, going to be hypogynous, gynaecium is above. So answer is very simple, option A. Okay, suppose if we have to talk about perigynous. Peri means something which is on the rims, I told you. So remember P, it starts with P. So remember peach, plum, rose, PPR, okay. And epigynous flowers. Epigynous flowers, which means the ovary is going to be inferior. You can see the ovary is down here. So here you can see what are the examples? Cucumber. Cucumber, you can say. And gova. And
and sunflower ray ray of florets of sunflower is given in a book so remember these examples so all of you remember the example which they can give you in your examination the next question which of the following is associated with decrease in cardiac output answer this question guys come on very good stanna what's the answer to this question all of you can try it out just try out this question okay let me just turn on to this yes seventh question so which of the following is associated with a decrease in cardiac output we already know cardiac output cardiac output is equal to stroke volume into heartbeat normal we know it is going to be 5 approximately 5 liters we already know correct we already know so heartbeat is 72 for 1 minute and this is 5000 ml from every ventricle each ventricle is going to be the point we already know so the answer comes around like this but the question is when will the cardiac output becomes less when there is going to be sympathetic parasympathetic or pneumotaxic or adrenal medullary hormones anybody mathi is answering b okay very good others yes of course the answer is b guys remember a parasympathetic nerves signals only will decrease the cardiac output suppose if you are very tensed okay don't be tensed actually if you are very tensed what can happen is there is going to be adrenal gland so what can happen is adrenal gland will in that they are going to secrete adrenaline hormone which is a stress hormone so in this hormone will be released but who is going to do that parasympathetic nerve or sympathetic nerve sympathetic nerves so when you are stressful it is mainly because of sympathetic nerves so that time when you are tense what will happen the heart beat beats very very faster so heart beat increases if heart beat suppose if it increases to 75 or 76 for 1 minute ultimately stroke volume remains the same suppose let's say cardiac output also increases but the question is decreases so remember stress stress is starting sympathetic so sympathetic nerves are always related with stress parasympathetic nerve is normal times when you are sleeping when you are doing normal actions that time it will just decrease the cardiac output so answer is very simple which is option b next question match the following column and select the correct option just answer this question all of you very easy question organ of corti question from year organ of corti cochlea eustachian tube stapes very easy question just answer this question all of you question 8 okay so let's check in let's check for the answer yes keep answering d okay let's check whether it is d very good remember cochlea cochlea is something which is coiled like this so where are you seeing coiled part definitely here and we know eustachian canal is the one which maintains the balance ear is not only for hearing it is also for maintaining the balance if i'm standing erect it's because of my ears okay so it is actually making me to stand properly so eustachian canal is the one which connects the middle ear and the pharynx this is correct yes stapes the most smallest bone in our body is going to be stapes we know malleus incus stapes which is the middle ear portion and stape is going to be actually attached to the oval window a line from our ncrt and organ of corti is going to be present on the basilar membrane so a is going to be for so the only option that you are going to see is option d so if you know at least the first option you can literally answer which is option 4 okay this is our ncrt lines we already know pinna external auditory meters and ear drum these three makes up external one middle ear is going to be malleus incus and stapes the image itself gives you an idea stapes in the oval window okay and the next is cochlea which is the innermost one which is actually coiled part next question hormones stored understand the question carefully stored and released from neurohypophysis i'm giving you a clue neurohypophysis means posterior part of the pituitary posterior part of the pituitary adenohypophysis means 
anterior part aa adeno hypophysis anterior part neuro hypophysis is going to be posterior part just answer this question very simple ninth is b very good all of you very good it's oxytocin and vasopressin Now, oxytocin is a love hormone and vasopressin is adh all of you know sometimes in your question paper they can give you adh or vasopressin okay listen carefully suppose if you are talking about this image which is from our ncrt revise it this is the anterior part of the pituitary which we call it adenohypophysis this is the posterior part of the pituitary which we call it neurohypophysis the question is remember carefully if i have to talk about this one so let's consider this is going to be the hypophyseal portal system there is a hypophyseal portal system important question hypophyseal portal system is the one which connects the neuro secretory cell from here and the anterior part of the pituitary but from the hypothalamus this is the hypothalamus in both the sides this is the hypothalamus here there is no hypophyseal portal system only the axons travel so what is produced here in the hypothalamus listen carefully you should remember the production of oxytocin and vasopressin will take place in hypothalamus that is very important so who is going to produce these two hormones hypothalamus is going to produce usually they'll produce releasing factors or inhibiting factor but hypothalamus is going to produce oxytocin and vasopressin and that oxytocin and vasopressin will come over here and it will be stored in the posterior part that's why the question is stored hormone that is stored and released and here from posterior part only oxytocin and this vasopressin will be released remember this one very important question so remember whether they are talking about production of these hormones or storage and release of these hormones okay let's move on to the next question match the following columns 1 and column 2 very easy question it's a question from animal kingdom chapter just see this question and answer me all of you question number 10 for you 10th question very good roshni very good ashwin very good mathi yes just answer this question question number 10 faster guys we'll do many more questions if you're going to do it a bit faster question number 10 easy question so if you know poison sting you can land up with correct option at least with two options somebody somebody just answer 10th is b okay let's check see air bladder poison sting whenever you see poison sting just stick on to trigon okay try okay trigons they have poison sting a fish which has this an air bladder you can see bony fishes osteochytes osteo means bones so bony fish bony fish can usually swim in the water they can just stand like this okay they can just go like that so bony fish usually has what air bladder so since they have air bladder they are helpful for buoyancy they just move like this they don't have to put their fins and uh, move around they just go like this randomly so air bladder is present in bony fishes air bladder is absent in cartilaginous fishes heteroceral caudal fins hetero means different if you're talking about shark shark will have one fin long and one fin very short that is the tail fins caudal fins so that you will see only in cartilaginous fishes like starch uh, sharks we can say okay chondrichthyes are going to be cartilaginous fishes and 6 to 15 pairs of gill slits are present in fishes but which fish cyclo cyclo means round storms means mouth it is present in round mouth fishes so a is going to be option 2 so where are you seeing a is option 2 very good very good ashwin very good roshni very good stana its answer very good mathi the answer is option 2 next question for you guys what will be the direction of flow of water when a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution just answer this question 11th question you can just answer when you there is a beaker and hypotonic solution remember hypotonic is referring to hypo means not less in this case hypotonic is referring to more water and i'm going to place one cell inside it which has less water so where the water will flow into the cell or out of the cell that's going to be the question 10th is 10th is b roshni just check the question 
flow out of the cell or into the cell? Just answer. Dead tech flow into the cell. Very good. It's C. Very good. Roshni, it's C. Stana, it's C. Dead tech, yes. Into the cell. Because there in the beaker, you have more water. So water always moves from region of high concentration to region of low concentration. Flows into the cell. So answer is very simple. It's option C. Okay. The next question, you can answer. Match the following column. One with column two. Important animal uh, kingdom question. Answer this. Gregarious polyphagous pest. The name gives you an idea. It's a pest. And the next one, adult usually have radial symmetry. But the larval stage has bilateral symmetry. Bilateral, you can cut into two equal halves. Book lungs, bioluminescence. Luminescence is related to light. Answer this question. Question number 12. 12 is C. Okay, let's check. All the best. Yes, yes. Very good, Ashwin. Very good, Stana. Very good, Mati. Yes, let's check. Pest is locust. All of you know locust. I'm going to show you images. An adult with radial symmetry. Starfishes, when they are in the adult stage, they will be like this. You can cut into any equal halves. But when they are young, you can divide into two equal halves. So, asterius. Asters means stars. So, asterius means starfishes. Or they can either give you echinodermata. Echinodermata. Spiny skinned animals. Book lungs, scorpions. And bioluminescence. Luminescence is light. You will see in Tinoplana they can give you or Tinophora also they can give you. Let's see the images of this one. You can see. All of you can see this one. Just checking over. Yes, you can see. See, this is the scorpion which is book lungs. And this is the locust which is a pest. And this is the bioluminescent. You can actually see over here, right? So they are actually illuminating. This is Tinoplana they can give you in your exam. Or Tinophora also they can give you. If you check here, starfishes. This is the early stage. You can cut into two equal halves. So when they are larval stage, they are bilateral. But when they are adult stage, you can cut into any equal halves. So the answer is very simple. So A is going to be option 4. So where are you seeing it? It is in third option. So very easy question. It is option C. The next question. Which of the following option does correctly represent the characteristic feature of a phylum annelida? Remember, annelida. If you know one option, you can literally answer this question. If you know only one thing, you can answer this question, even if you don't know anything. Just answer this question. Thirteenth question. Anybody can answer? Question number 13. Question number 13. If you know one answer, you can literally answer this question. 13th is B. Very good. 13th is B. Very good, Dertak. Very good, Ashwin. Uh, very good, Roshni. Yes, yes. See, segmented. If you know segment word, because earthworms are segmented. After Annelida, you will see all the organisms are actually segmented. We have vertebral column as a segment. And you can see bilateral. From platyhelminthus onwards, you will see bilateral symmetrical. And of course, they are made up of three layers, ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. So they are triploblastic. So answer is very simple. If you knew segmentation, you can literally answer such kind of questions. Question number 14 for you. Remember this. This is a question from counter current mechanism. Okay, excretory part. Increase in osmolarity. We know it will increase from 60 osmol to 120 osmol in the medullary region. All of you know is mainly maintained by, it's maintained, it's not like created by, it's maintained by which of these things. The osmolarity or we can say the concentration should not move to the cortex. So we maintain inside this medulla itself. Two important things plays a major role in maintaining those things in between. Just answer this question. Question number 14 for you. Just type me with 14 and the answer, guys. All of you. Close proximity between Henle's loop and Vasa recta, countercurrent mechanism. Or selective secretion of bicarbonates and hydrogen ion PCT and higher blood pressure in glomerular capillaries. What is it? It's 14th question. Very easy question. If you know counter current mechanism, I told you the answer itself. It's counter current mechanism is one of the reasons which maintains the osmolarity in the medulla region. Another one is Henle's loop and Vasa recta. They just interchanges, right? All the ions actually. So one and two is going to be the correct one. It's not selective secretion here. It is actually reabsorption. Secretion is something which you are secreting it out. The tubules. This is not secretion. It is reabsorption, but they're given wrongly. It is not high blood pressure. If high blood pressure is there, then we will talk about those things in the next one. Okay. 
So answer is very simple. It is one and two. So it's ultimately going to be fourth one. Very good, Mathi. It's D. Very good, uh, Stano. Yes. See, the proximity between Henle's loop and Vasa rector is the one which maintains high osmolarity, one twenty or thousand two hundred. It will be maintained over there in the inner medullary region. PCT is helpful for secretion of H plus, but they have given secretion of bicarbonates. This line is important. Reabsorption of bicarbonate. They'll take the bicarbonates in, not secrete it, but they secrete the protons out. So they have given that one wrongly. Blood pressure, if it is in the blood capillary, is responsible for GFR rate. All of you know, it has nothing to do with counter current mechanism. It just increases the blood pressure or decreases the blood pressure accordingly. It has no role in maintaining the uh, osmolarity in the medulla region. Next question. Select the correct statement. ANF increases the blood pressure. Correct statement. Angiotensin two is a vasodilator. That two a powerful vasodilator. Counter current pattern of blood flow is not absorbed in vasa recta. And the next one. Reduction in glomerular filtration rate activates JG cells to release renin. Just answer this question. Which is the correct statement? Question number fifteen. Just answer this question, all of you. Very easy question. Deal this question. A N F. Remember what's the role of A N F? And remember what's the role of renin? All of you. This renin is related to only one N. R E N N I N is going to be responsible for digestion of milk proteins in case of babies. Okay. Mathi is answering D. Okay. Others. No, it's fourteen question. Okay, answer for fifteen question. Easy, guys. Listen, two important things you are gonna remember the, in this case. They are asking for correct. What you can go? Angiotensin two is a powerful vasodilator. No, they will not relax the vessels. They will actually constrict the vessels. So, angiotensin is mainly responsible for increase of blood pressure. Okay. So, people who have less blood pressure. In order to increase the blood pressure, angiotensin is going to help a lot. So, angiotensin's role is to increase the blood pressure. How the blood pressure will increase when the walls become constrict? So, it's a vasoconstrictor, not a dilator. A and F. So, this is a wrong statement. We cannot choose A and F. A and F decreases the blood pressure, never increases. So, it decreases the blood pressure. It actually suppose if anybody has more blood pressure, A N F is going to act, which is present on the walls of the atria. Actually, counter current. So this is also a wrong statement. Counter current pattern of blood flow is not absorbed in vasa recta. Definitely, counter current mechanism happens only with Henle's loop in vasa recta. Vasa recta is involved, but they have given not. So this is also wrong. But listen, when there is a reduction in glomerular filtration rate, which means Suppose if I'm talking about a person who is lost in a desert, okay, or we can say a person who is lost in a desert who has less water consumption, water is less. If water is less, body fluid is less. If body fluid is less, what exactly happen? The filtration is less. Glomerular filtration is less. Then they will stimulate the JG apparatus, and in JG apparatus they will. Release JG cells, and now the JG cells will release renin, and then we'll be talking about RAS mechanism, renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which brings the blood pressure back again to high, because if body fluid is less, the amount of volume of the blood is less, or body fluid is less, so pressure will be less. If there are only fifty molecule, the bombardment between the molecule will be less, but if there are hundred molecule, there would be more of pressure. So that's what it is. So the correct statement is very simple. It's option D. Very good, very good, all of you. Very good, Stanna. Next question. Select the correct option. Uh, you can just refer. It is talking about the ribs. Important question from your human physiology in breathing and exchange of gases. Just answer this question, all of you. Question number sixteen. All of you, just check in for the question eight, nine, ten pairs. Articulate directly with the sternum. You have to choose correct one. And the eleventh and the twelfth pairs connected to the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilages. Each rib is a flat, thin bone, and all the ribs are connected dorsally to the vertebra and ventrally to the sternum. 
and there are seven pairs of vert vertebral sternal and three pairs of vertebral condyle and two pairs of vertebral ribs what's the answer anybody 16 is d very good roshni yes it is d very good ashwin it is 16 is d okay we already know about this just understand it we already know one two you can check over this image you can literally see this image so one two three four five six seven so we have set totally 12 pairs of ribs out of that the seven pairs of ribs are actually dorsally attached to the vertebral column behind and ventrally attached to the sternum that you're going to see this is the sternum actually which is like a tie kind of thing and this front portion is actually attached to the cartilage here this blue portion that you're seeing is cartilage so first seven ribs are called as true ribs but eighth ninth and tenth are called as false rib which means they will not be attached to the sternum eighth and ninth and tenth are actually attached to the seventh rib seventh rib with the cartilage so they are first seven are going to be vertebrosternal brosternal eight nine ten are going to be vertebrochondral and last 11 and 12 are actually attached only behind they will not be attached to the sternum they will be attached only to the thoracic thoracic area or we can say in the vertebral column they'll be attached so let's check in first option they have given eighth ninth tenth articulate directly to the sternum no they will connect to the seventh rib only they'll never connect to this um, sternum directly so this is a wrong statement next one 11th and the 12th pairs are connected to the sternum with the help of hyaline cartilage no the last two will never be attached to a sternum they will be attached only to the vertebral column wrong statement next one each rib is flat rib correct all the ribs not all the ribs are attached dorsally First seven are attached to the dorsally by vertebral column and ventrally by sternum. Eight, nine, ten are attached to the seventh rib, but the last two are not attached to the sternum but to the vertebral. So this is again a wrong statement. The last one is correct. First seven pairs, vertebrosternal, they are attached to vertebral column also, sternum also. Next three, eight, nine and ten are actually vertebrochondral. We already know. Last two are attached only to the vertebra. So the correct answer is going to be question number or option number four which is option d next question so we have already done okay biologist studied the population of rats in a barn okay he found that the average natality was 250 average mortality was 240 and the immigration was 20 and the emigration was 30 what is the net population you have to find out very easy question just answer what's going to be the answer for this question anybody yes very good dear tech just answer question number 17 question number 17 guys very easy question just answer Seventeen is A. Okay, very simple, very good, very good, very good. All of you, all of you are really doing good. Roshni, Stanna, Daytech, yes, yes. So listen, very easy question. Natality means birth. All of you know. So let's write birth rate plus immigration. Immigration means something which comes in. So immigration. Okay, then death minus of death plus emigration emigration means someone who goes out of the country we used to say right so birth they have given 250 and immigration they have given 20 so 20 plus 250 minus of death rate they have given it as 240 and the emigration they have given it as 30 so ultimately 270 minus 270 so the answer is very simple it's option a you will get such kind of question very easy question answer it okay the next question you are given a tissue with its potential for differentiation in an artificial culture medium and which are the following pairs of hormones will you add to the medium to secure shoot and root if you want shoot development what and what hormones are required if you want root development what hormones are required very easy question answer this question very good, Mathi. The answer is zero only. Question for 18th one. You can just answer 18th question. Very good. It's just look over the question. 
Yes. See, sometimes in your question paper, this you have to analyze. They can give you another option. Suppose I'm giving an other option like cytokinin and auxin. If the option is like this, then choose this option. Okay, because shoots they are talking first and roots they are talking second. Okay, so that time you have to put shoot development is initiated by cytokinin, root development by auxin. Suppose if they are not given something like this, if options are given like this, you have to choose this, not the second one. If they have given options like this, then you can choose option B. Okay, so it is very simple, option B. Okay, 19th question, total lung capacity. Total lung capacity is the total volume of air that is present at the end of forced inspiration. This is a very important question. You have to remember what is residual, inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume. One time all of you go and revise it back again. What is it? TLC. TLC, there's a very important calculation. Remember and tell me. 19th is, 19th is B. Okay, let's check. 19th is B. Is it 19th B, all of you? Okay, let's write it. See, TLC is equal to vital capacity plus residual volume. Remember this, vital capacity plus residual volume. Before going in for the examination, I would suggest all of you to revise this one once again or else you guys will forget. Okay, vital capacity. So vital capacity, what is vital capacity? You have to remember IRV, ERV and TV. These three things makes vital capacity and plus they have given residual plus RV. So TLC is equal to IRV, ERV, TV and RV. So the answer is very simple. What's the answer? Yes, of course, all of you. It's option D. All of you revise what is the residual volume, which is tidal volume is 500. You have to remember what is IRV. After um, the amount of additional air that you can inspire, that is going to be the inspiratory reserve volume, which will be like 2,500 to 3,000. And expiratory reserve volume, you have to remember, which is 1,000 to 1,100. And residual volume is 1,100 2200 okay and you have to remember all the capacity once again so answer is very simple option b okay next is select the incorrect statement okay it's a question from transport and plants transport of molecules in flowing which is they're talking about molecules food can be bidirectional is it correct movement of minerals in xylem is unidirectional unloading of sucrose remember sucrose at sink Sink means where it is required. Source means where it is produced. Sink means where it is going. Okay. Does not involve utilization of ATP. And all the elements are easily mobilized in plants from one region to another. What are the minerals? Phosphorus, sulfur, nitrogen, potassium. What's the incorrect statement? Answer this question, guys. Question number 20. 20 is C. Very good. Very good, Ashwin. Very good, Mati. Of course. When Suppose let's talk about leaf. In leaf, you are going to produce glucose through the process of photosynthesis. But a glucose cannot be transported as such because it's a reducing sugar, reacting sugar because they have the functional group. So while going, they'll be transported as sucrose. So where the sucrose has to go, suppose this is going to be one plant cell. This plant cell needs, so this is going to be the sink and this is going to be the source. So whenever they have to be loaded inside the cell, they need ATP but they have given does not involve ATP. So this is the correct answer for this, which is the incorrect statement. Definitely movement of food is bi-directional or multi-directional, we can say. Xylem transport, water transport or mineral transport is always in one direction, down to up. And all these minerals can be transported. Correct answer. The next question, match the following column one with column two. Very easy question. It's a question from human reproduction chapter. If you know answers, it's going to be very simple. Just approach this question very nicely. Question 21. Answer this question, guys. 21th question. Easy question. If you know at least one, you will end up with correct one. If you know question B, I'm giving you a clue. If you know B, you will end up with correct one. Placenta formation. This we will get in pregnancy test taking a urine sample and when you analyze you will see one hormone which is HCG 
pregnancy test so this hormone will be detected in the urine when a placenta is formed so who is going to secrete this one ultimately head placenta is secrete so what's the answer for this question guys yes it is d very good data very good uh, stana very good roshni yes let's check so a ovary is going to secrete definitely we know ovary changes estrogen and progesterone corpus luteum when a corpus luteum will secrete only progesterone for the implantation of the uh, fetus in the uterus and leydig cells we know leydig cells role is to secrete male hormone which is androgen okay all of you know so answer is very simple it's question 21 answer is b next question it's from animal kingdom unit match the following column with column 2 remember this one it's very important you have to remember the scientific name that's what this question is about answer this question guys actinodites terophus terophilus petromycin if you know first option you will end up with the correct one anybody can you just try this question 22 is b is it b just check it 22 is b okay listen you can try i'm going to give you some some time 22 is c very good roshni yes it is c only listen actinodites that is penguin just remember okay dites is penguin terophus tero something which flies so it is flying fish or flying fox terophilum philum okay just remember philum is going to be fish angel fish so terophilum is angel fish terophus is flying fox actinodites is going to be penguin petromycin all of you know lampreys it's going to be lampreys so it's very easy option 3 so remember actinodites penguin terophus is flying fox terophilum is angel fish petromycin is lampreys you might get questions like this in your examination next one is very simple match the following column one with column two nematotaxic oxygen dissociation curve carbonic and hydrase primary site of exchange of gases it's very easy question you can literally answer just try on everybody 23rd question for you Twenty third, okay, Roshni, it's B, okay, Roshni, it's telling B, okay, very good, very good. Pneumotaxic, remember where is pneumotaxic? Pneumotaxic center is present in the upper region of the pons region of the brain. They are the one which reduces the respiratory rate, so it is correct. Oxygen dissociation curve, so you where are you seeing A is going to be two only in the second option, correct? Okay, let's check the next one. B is three, yes. oxygen dissociation curve is related with hemoglobin binding okay carbonic anhydrase will be seen in rbc in that you will see carbonic anhydrase where water and carbon dioxide will combine with the help of carbonic anhydrase and it forms carbonic acid and then they will dissociate into bicarbonate ions and it will be transported as bicarbonates only so carbonic anhydrase is present in rbc of course we know the exchange of gases will take place in alveoli so the answer is option b or the second one okay which of the following understand the question and answer me which of the following is responsible for both the milk ejection reflex and fetal ejection reflex very important question very important question just understand and answer me this question 24th question 24th question easy question guys fetal ejection i'm giving you another clue it actually produced in hypothalamus two hormones are produced in hypothalamus i told you this hormone is also produced in hypothalamus very good what's the answer it is going to be anybody is going to try very good ashwin it's oxytocin okay remember i'm going to tell you two important difference if the question is asked milk production remember carefully milk production then it is prolactin but here milk ejection what will happen is when the baby is going to come out fetal baby ejection so what will happen there is a release of oxytocin from the hypothalamus and it will come to the uterus you already know and in the uterus there is going to be myometrium the middle membrane okay myometrium 
is going to contract a lot very heavily and then the baby will come out so oxytocin is involving in the contraction or the ejection of the baby and and whenever this prolactin is actually activated it's for milk production in the mammary gland milk is produced but the milk has to come from the mammary gland to the nipple part when it will happen who is going to do that oxytocin so if the question is as production of milk it is prolactin but ejection of milk is actually done by oxytocin so remember oxytocin is helpful for fetal ejection remember ejection both the things are done by oxytocin simple and we know about estrogen is for female uh, sex hormone and relaxin is also the other hormone which is actually involved in female parts okay which of the following conditions in which parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone anybody when will the parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone you can just answer question number 25 anybody easy question don't get confused with thyroids we know there are two thyroid connected you have two thyroid which is actually present yes and then in that you're going to see suppose let me draw like this here one parathyroid here one parathyroid here one parathyroid here one parathyroid so four parathyroid glands are present the question is when will the parathyroid hormone gland will be stimulated yes when when will it be released 25 is b very good all of you when there is going to be calcium level less listen carefully there's a difference of calcitonin remember this calcitonin actually comes from thyroid gland thyroid gland can secrete two hormones one is thyroxin another one is calcitonin this is different and this is parathyroid they are talking about parathyroid gland will be stimulated when the ox ca calcium level in the blood is less okay let's take in the blood calcium is less if calcium is less where is the calcium stored maximum in the bones so that time what will happen from the bones the calcium will be released and the calcium level increases in the blood so this condition is different if it is parathyroid the blood parathyroid is stimulated when the blood has less calcium but calcitonin is just the opposite when the blood calcium levels are high in the blood that time this thyroid gland is stimulated to release calcitonin so we can say a calcitonin and the parathyroid hormones are going to be antagonist so remember answer is simple b but remember the difference between these two things the next question which of the following animals are true coelom with bilateral symmetry easy question see bilateral symmetry starts from platyhelminthes but they are talking about true coelom which is u coelomate u means true what's the answer for this very easy question 26th question you can answer very good very good ashwin the answer is option d so true coelom you will see in annelida and of course they are all ascheelminthes is pseudo coelomate and platyhelminthes is going to be um, uh, bilateral symmetrical echinodermata is going to be bilateral also possible and radial also possible the next question during which phase of the cell cycle the amount of dna in a cell remains this is very important at 4c level if the initial amount of dna is 2c we know there's going to be g1 yes g2 and m phase when a cell is going to enter into g1 phase the dna content is going to be 2c in s phase synthetic phase dna will multiply or dna replication will take place it is going to be 4c but the question is the amount of dna in a cell remains as 4c remains as 4c only if the initial amount is 2c i have started with 2c in g1 and it is going to remain 4c at which stage easy question what's the answer 27 very good ashwin it is b only in g2 phase it will be 4c in mitotic phase you can say but mitotic phase there are three phases anaphase prophase metaphase anaphase telophase so in anaphase you will have some changes so you cannot choose first option and you cannot choose g1 where it is present g0 so the only answer comes around is option b the next question very easy question 
the proteolytic enzyme the enzyme which is responsible for breaking protein renin this is renin which breaks protein is present in intestinal juice bile juice gastric juice pancreatic juice this is for babies infants infant milk digestion easy question where it is present it is in intestinal juice or bile juice or gastric juice or pancreatic juice we know the answer this question question number 28 you can just try question 28 very good all of you it is present in gastric juice just remember usually gastric juice we already know all the things are present and even milk digestion will take place where the pro renin will be coming from gastric juice or we can say gastric gland is going to have chief cells glands are made up of cells which are going to be chief cells and these chief cells produces renin actually and this renin is helpful for digestion of milk protein in baby so answer is option c question number 9 easy question specialized epidermal cells surrounding the gut cells are called as what this is the gut cell in a stomata and there are some cells which actually surrounds like this what is this cell called as very simple and we are left with one question we'll finish off okay so what's the what is this cell called as epidermal cell what is this cell called as 29 is d very good dertek yes very good mathi very good roshni of course this cell is called as subsidiary cell easy question you can get very easy questions like this okay just answer this question it's a question from morphology of flowering plants very important so you have to match the placentation basal axile parietal free central it's given it's important question guys so just answer if you know basal you can come up with the correct answer if you know basal you can come up with correct answer anybody just try this question and then we are going to end the session 30th question somebody 30th of course it is going to be what anybody want to try just try one one this question only this question placentation 30 is c very good very good roshni the answer is c see basal is sunflower axil rest of the things you can mark it china rose parietal you are seeing in mustard fee central dianthus this question all of you should go and revise it back again because it's a placentation question which you will forget the examples so at least solve the questions based on this one and we have come to the end of the session so we have solved 30 questions from biology and we have done botany and zoology questions so i wish all of you a uh, Uh, all the best to all of you do really well and you have done so much of preparation so don't be stressed don't be worried approach the questions properly and answer all the questions perfectly and very specifically mark the correct answers in the omr sheet properly and definitely you are going to get the seats again so you will become a doctor so think that in mind and be happy when you're going in for the examination hall because you are going to become a doctor one day and going to help many many people so all the very best and all the very best to all my lovely students and i'm going to meet you back again in the next video thank you all of you for joining thank you very much